Hi there, I'm Punky Tolson. Welcome to the Life on Life podcast. You're listening to episode number 87, Get Back to Where You Belong. Hi there, friends, and welcome back to Life on Life. It's the end of the year, and I wanted to leave you with some encouragement and some exhortation. And you know, it wouldn't be me if I didn't encourage you in the things of the faith. And so that's what I want to talk to you about today. You know, next year, 2023, in March, it will be three years since the pandemic hit us and the lockdown happened. And at that time, if you remember, and I know you do, churches were shuttered. The word of God was not shuttered, but churches were shuttered and started streaming online. And we had the great opportunity to be able to gather together online, hear our pastors preach, join in the fellowship and the worship from our sofas. That was a temporary situation. Temporary situation. It was for our convenience, and we praise God that we we're able to do that. But y'all, it's coming up on three years, and some of us still have not made our way from the sofa to the pew or back into the chair in the church fellowship, and you need to be there. That is where you belong, back to where you once belonged, in the church. So here's my exhortation to y'all. Get back to church or go to church. Maybe you just came to know Jesus during the pandemic, and maybe it happened while you're watching something online. Praise God for that, right? But get to church or get back to church. That is where you belong as a believer, as a follower of Christ. You need to be a part of the fellowship. Now, yes, we are the church. The church is made up of people, people that are indwelled by the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. But the fellowship of the believers in the church gathered is part of what the Christian life is all about. It's an essential, critical part of our walk, our experience in the Christian life to be with other believers. We were not meant to be Lone Ranger Christians, as my husband says all the time. We were not meant to be isolated. You know why? Because you cannot fully thrive and function as a follower of Christ in isolation. You have to be among the believers, among the fellowship of the believers. Now listen to what the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 10. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So I'm here to encourage you, get back to church because some of us are in the habit of not meeting together and we've got to break that habit. So maybe you're saying, well, you know, I found this pastor online. I really like him a whole lot better than my pastor. Okay, great. Listen to him when you have time. But get back to your church. And if you think you're going to find the perfect church, you're wrong because there are no perfect people. There will be no perfect church and there's no perfect pastor because we're all human and none of us are perfect. So we got to do away with the nitpicking of I don't like the music and I don't like the style of his preaching and yada, yada, yada. Look, here's what you look for in a church that there is sound biblical doctrine being preached from the Word of God where your pastor is actually preaching from the Bible and not notes with a nice little devotional on it. The word of God is being preached. Jesus Christ is lifted up and exalted. And there is a believer's fellowship where we are serving together and being served and encouraging and exhorting one another in the body of Christ. So the scriptures being preached and preached rightly, where you've got good theological sound doctrine being taught. You're being equipped with the word of God and you've got fellowship with others in Christ, learning to walk out the truth of scripture in everyday life in your church body. And Jesus is extolled. God is lifted up and worshiped in that place. That's what you look for. I don't care what color the carpet is. I don't care what kind of music they play. Don't get caught up in the non-essentials, in the picky stuff. Look for the true meat. I'm going to read to you from Acts 2 in the Fellowship of the Believers. This is the first church gathering. This is what 
um, after Peter preached, this is what is said about those believers, that fellowship of the believers, that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, and awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing to the proceeds to all as, as were needed. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So they gathered together. They heard the apostles teaching. There was the breaking of bread and prayers. So that's holy communion and praying together. And it says great awe came over every soul and wonder and sign. Wonders and signs were being done throughout the apostles. But here's the thing, y'all. We, we can say, well, you know, I have a group. I have a supper club that I meet with, or I've got a women's Bible study that I meet with, and that's my church. Well, no, it's not. You've got to be with the fellowship of the believers. There's got to be the teaching that comes from the apostles through the word of God, that that's being taught. There's worship. There's um, praying together, all of those things. And I don't think that's always happening in a supper club. Get to church. Get back to church. You will be so glad. You know, when times are tough, when times hit us and we are struggling with something, we need the church to come alongside. We need there to be with one another, brothers and sisters in Christ, walking it out together. And don't do a bunch of church hopping and just say, I don't like this one, so we'll go over here. Find a church and get committed. Stay committed. Find out how you can serve in your church. There is something you can do. I know that because if you're in Christ, the Holy Spirit dwells you and within you and you have been given spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts, not for your sake. Your spiritual gifts are to be used to build up and equip the body of Christ, primarily in your church. So that's the first thing I want you to do. Start now. Start praying as you go visit churches or go back to your church. Lord, let me engage here fully with the Spirit of God in me to do what you would have me do and be where you would have me be. And I, I want to hear from you if you've, if you've done that. But I exhort you to get up off the couch and get yourself back to church. The other thing I want to exhort you to do, you got it. Read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible. This is the year, y'all. I'm not saying you've got to read through the Bible in a whole year. That certainly is a worthy effort, and I know a lot of people that are doing it, and it, there's great fruit to come out of it. I'm just saying read your Bible, and read your Bible every day. So here's the thing. If you want to know who God is, read the Gospel of John. That gospel is written primarily that we would know who God is in the person of Jesus Christ. So that's a place to start. If you want to know what Christ has done for you, you can take on a bigger challenge. Read the epistle to the Romans. It's the Magna Carta of our faith. It's everything Christ did for us on the cross. God did for us through Christ on the cross. Um, it's everything you have um, as a believer in Christ. And it's beautiful. It's one of the richest epistles you'll read in the New Testament. And then finally, if you want to know how to live as a follower of Christ in the day-to-day, -day, read Ephesians. I'd say read Colossians or Philippians too, but read Ephesians. It kind of covers all of the bases in that, in that epistle. But start somewhere and read the Bible every day. Even if you just read one verse and go deep in that verse, study it. Let it sink in deeply. Think it through. We've got resources um, that are available to you. We'll put some um, notes and some links in the show notes. Um, I've got a, a card that I've told you all about. I can send that to you as a downloadable. You print it out, you fold it in half, you stick it in your Bible, and it's basically how to read your Bible. As you're reading your Bible, how to study it, questions to ask so that you can get something out of opening your Bible and reading. I'm not talking about a devotional. I think devotionals are great, but we need two things as believers and followers of Jesus Christ. We need a hefty, good dose, a good serving of God's word in our spirit every day. Just like food nourishes your body Spiritual food in the form of the Word of God nourishes our spiritual soul. 
And we need that every day. And we also need to be with the fellowship of the believers. I'm not talking just about friends of yours who are Christians. That is fabulous. But you need to be in church. So those two things I want to leave you with and encourage you to do. You will be so blessed. And we don't want to be out of fellowship with the Lord um, and not being obedient to those things. And it really is rebellion when we put the brakes on and say, "Mm, no, I'm just fine sitting on the couch. Get back to church and open your Bible and read it. So last thing I want to leave you with is this. I have special knees. Knees, not needs, knees. I have special knees. And my special knees are going to be made even more special in the new year. I'm having some surgery, some knee surgery, and I'm excited about it. And um, it's been a long time coming. So I'm going to take a minute off here after the new year to um, get this done. And um, I'll pop on here and there and kind of tell you how things are going. I even have some pictures or videos for you if you would like to see that. So um, if you wonder where I am and why you haven't heard from me for a little bit, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to enjoy this forced stillness. Um, You've heard me talk about that so often on the podcast, and I'm actually looking forward to that part of it. Um, And I've been doing a lot of work ahead of time to get strong for this surgery, so hopefully my comeback will happen real fast. And I'll keep you posted. But I just wanted to share those things with you and tell you how much I love you. And golly, have we really finished a whole nother year? 2022 is almost done for the year. And I hope you'll look back and reflect on all the ways. Ah, get so choked up. You've seen God work in your life. He's just so good. And I know, I know, I know, I know. Even if it was one of the hardest years of your life out there, sweetheart, you turn around and you look and you see the goodness of God in the land of the living because it's there. He's got so much more ahead of you. Just you wait. So God bless you. I pray you have the most beautiful Christmas and that you have a fabulous start to your new year. And I'll see you in 2023. Until then, that's that for that. I sure do love you and you are greatly and dearly loved by the King. Don't you ever forget it. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me on the podcast today and for doing life with me. Hey, tell me what's on your heart, friend. I would really love to talk about what you want to talk about. So email me at hello at punkytolson.com or find me on Instagram too. Now that's a new email address, hello at punkytolson.com. Wherever you listen, please remember to subscribe to this podcast. It really helps us get these messages to more people. And while you're at it, please share this message with a friend. Pass it along to somebody that you do life with too. That's that for that, guys. I love y'all. Bye-bye.